Hello, and welcome to Canyons U. The bite sized PD that we're going to talk about today is identifying patterns in history, continuity, and change over time. As you know, in Canyon School District, we have professional norms. Um, if you would look over these norms and um, think maybe about one or two that you would like to specifically focus on during this short professional development, that would be great. So we have be committed, be responsible, be respectful, and be safe. All right, since no one has joined yet, I'm not going to worry too much about um, having you mute your microphone or turn on your camera. Um, but in the future, if you join one, that'll be the professional norms for that. And if you have any questions or comments, of course, you can always type them in the chat. In Canyon School District, we have a multi-tiered system of support that we tie everything that we do to. Um, for this PD, we will be focusing on the blue section, particularly on high quality academic instruction. Okay, so our learning intentions and success criteria for today. Our learning intentions are, I can learn how the application of themes, lenses, and current events can show a consistent pattern of continuity and change over time. And I can recognize the value of using WISER to help students apply themes, lenses, and current events. I will know that I have done my job if, by the end of this PD, you can implement themes, lenses, and current events into your curriculum so that your students can identify continuity and change over time. And if you can use WISER to help support that implementation. All right, so let's start with a quote by Teddy Roosevelt. <clears throat> Excuse me, it says, the more you know about the past, the better prepared you are for the future. So I want you to think about that in relation to um, continuity and change over time. The more you know about the past, the better prepared you are for the future. I had a conversation with um, some teachers, some history teachers, um, about this topic. And one of them said that she always asks, asks her students, you know, why is history important? And one student said, well, because history repeats itself. And she said, yes, can you give me an example? And the student couldn't. And so if we're really doing a good job as history teachers, then we are showing students how things have changed over time, or how things are the same, and what those patterns look like. So they're more prepared for the future. All right, so let's dig in. Themes, lenses, and current events. Those are the mechanisms that we will use to showcase continuity and change over time. So when it comes to themes, I want you to think about what comes to your mind when you see the words conflict, compromise, and progress. I chose these words really carefully because you can really, um, there's so many layers to these themes. You know, if you're showing conflict, then you're also showing times when there wasn't conflict. If you are talking about compromise, then you're also talking about times when there wasn't compromise and, and what was the consequence of that, as well as progress. When was there progress? When was there not progress? Who defines progress? Um, progress socially, progress, you know, based on technology, these themes really have a lot of layers to them. So think about how could these three themes apply to a history or government class, for example. And how could these themes make teaching more engaging for students? So you know, we want our students doing history, talking about history, um, feeling part of history. And so how can these themes apply to the history classes and the government classes we teach? And how, how can these themes make 
history more engaging for students and and i'll give you some examples of that but but one of the things that comes to mind is even using um these themes as your common formative assessments or using them as starters or um kind of wrap up discussion pieces you know but the point is to continuously use and talk about these themes so that kids start to see those patterns in history all right, the next thing is lenses and historical thinking skills. So we want our students to think like historians, but, but how can we help them do that? So how can using primary documents as a way to look through history by focusing on different lenses, you know, what, what could those lenses look like? And we brainstormed um, some categories for those lenses. It's people, systems, and geography. So if we're using primary to documents to look at history through different lenses, if you want to look at the lens of people, then you're going to be thinking about, well, how does this period in history or how does this in event impact minorities? How does it impact um, different genders? How does it impact families? How does it impact different occupations? And to really think about, you know, when we're teaching history, are we teaching it through multiple lenses, or are we just keeping to one lens or, or one narrative? The same thing is with social, um, economic, religious, and political lenses. Those are called our, our system lenses. But you know, how does an event like World War I, how does it impact society? How did it impact you know, the United States economically? How did it impact um, religion? How did it impact politics? And having kids not just always see the political lens of things, but some of these other lenses as well. And then, of course, in geography, thinking about, you know, your physical boundaries, as well as the over encompassing elements of human geography as well. So lenses allows for easy ways to practice historical thinking skills, right, because um, students have to look at documents, they have to analyze documents, they have to write about documents. And as students learn how to analyze text, you can take it a step further to helping them have those important information literacy skills. So to help them know how to combat mis and disinformation in today's society. So starting with historical documents is a great entry point for that. You know, helping a kid really think through, you know, is there bias in this? And helping them understand you know, primary documents just didn't have, they, you know, they just don't have bias, but we also have bias today. Okay, and the last is current events. So our thought here is take the same lens or lenses that you're focusing on and apply it to current events. And that provides a direct link between current events and curriculum standards. I've had a lot of teachers talk about how they want to teach current events, but they're a little nervous to teach current events in our current um, political climate. And being able to really connect current events to curriculum standards um, is one great way to do that. So let's try it out. Um, I have chosen two different standards here that we can look at. Um, we have US History Standard 5.2, World History Standard 4.4. Just for the sake of today, let's do US History Standard 5.2. So that says students will use evidence to investigate the effectiveness of the New Deal as a response to economic crisis. So let's go through and think about, okay, here's the standard. How can this connect to themes, lenses, and current events? So which theme could you use to teach this standard? As I presented this before, everybody's in agreement that really you, it applies to all three. Um, you know, you could talk about um, social economic climate. You could talk about compromise. You could talk about progress, right? And, and of course, all three. So which lens could you use, right? So if we go back to the lenses here, you know, with the New Deal, we could look at different systems, right? We could talk about social, economic, political. We could also talk about people. So think for a second, maybe what lens would you pick or lenses?
And then how could you tie it to current events? So that connection to current events will be similar to the lens that you have chosen. And I'll model that in just a second. Okay, so again, if we're using the same standard, as I've mentioned, which theme could you use? Um, these themes are going to allow for inquiry and discussion, and inquiry is so important in history classes to get students thinking and asking these complex questions. Again, we've talked about what lens could we, we use. Um, I'm going to pick the lens of, of women, right? We know that we have several options to choose from, but when we look at the standard, you know, if we are looking at evidence to investigate the effectiveness of the New Deal, well, how effective was it for women, right? Not just maybe men. So of course, we're going to use primary documents as a way to examine lenses. So here's a primary document here. Um, I'll give you a moment to read it and then we'll talk about it. So just by talking about this primary document and having students, you know, analyze it and examine it, you know, there's this question at, at the very end, you know, there must be as many women out of jobs in cities and suffering extreme poverty as there are men, what is happening to them, right? And then to, to pose that inquiry question, actually, based on this document, and, and to have students talk about it and think about it. So then connecting it to current events today. So since I was looking at um, a government program that was introduced that impacted women. So we're gonna look at another um, maybe government impact of a program or initiative and, and see how it's impacting women. So we wanna make sure that it's the same. So we could just say, what impact does the common economy have on women today? And here's, here's an article um, nearly 2.4 billion women globally don't have the same economic rights as men. And so then you're making a connection from the lens that you used women to the same type of thing today. All right. So how can themes, lenses, and current events then show these patterns of continuity and change over time? So think about that for a second. So these are some of my thoughts. If you use the themes of conflict, compromise, and progress consistently in your classroom, students will begin to see those patterns, how things stay the same and how things change. If you use lenses consistently in your classroom, students will begin to see how things stay the same and how they change for each of those lenses, right? How do things change for different people and not for other people or looking at different systems, right? How do things stay the same socially, but change politically? And, and as we're just having these conversations, these are much bigger, larger, complex ideas that will bring students in, will be, will be much more inquiry-based. Um, and if you can connect lenses to current events, students see how things are today, right? So going back to women in the New Deal, you know, how did the New Deal impact women economically? Talking about the impact of women economically today, again, students are going to see patterns that are staying the same or that are changing. Okay, so how can we bring WISER into this? Um, you've probably been introduced to WISER at a school level. I know we talked about it at District Day, but WISER is, um, or Wicker, you might have heard it that way as well. It's kind of all the same type of thing, but how can we use WISER to help support us um, in this pattern of change or continuity? 
So um, WISER includes writing, inquiry, speaking and listening, and reading and viewing. So let's just review each of them really quickly. So go ahead and read the writing. So what really stands out to me in this writing component is that writing is really a way to make learning visible, to record that student thinking. Okay, let's look at inquiry. Go ahead and read that to yourself. So I really love inquiry. I think inquiry really ties to social studies and history. So in this, Inquiry is really directing the students to ask those questions, right? And then as they build connections, then kids are going to be writing, speaking, and listening, and, and reading and viewing based off of that inquiry. And I think the themes will really work well with that. Okay, read to yourself, speaking and listening. So I love that it's not just speaking, that it also has this component of listening, right? Which is such an important skill to teach our students. But, but this is that discussion part, right? That's so important in history classes and um, government classes and all social studies classes, you know, to ask those questions, you know, how did the New Deal impact women? Did it impact women? And, and then to have that exchange of ideas and information and opinions. So that's also a really awesome one. Okay, go ahead and look at reading and viewing. So as we talk about um, lenses and the need to use primary sources to really look at the different lenses of history, this, this is perfect <clears throat> right here. So this talks about how students really need to read or view to gain meaning and understanding and knowledge to contextualize learning, right? So as you contextualize this learning, then you're able to view history through different lenses. You're able to ask those inquiry questions that relate to themes. So in the instructional manuals, we have a scaffolding section that is linked. Um, they've done a fantastic job of linking and providing examples of different the different elements of WISER within these different scaffolds. And so if you're thinking, well, how could I do that? This would be a great way to start. Just go into um, your curriculum guides and click under the scaffolding section and you'll have a whole bunch of examples that come up and they are labeled, of course, according to um, the WISER acronym over here with the student moves. We've also been able to um, provide a really great supportive document to help support our multilingual learners, um, also regarding WISER. And so that's a great resource to check out as well. So how can you use WISER to help students recognize continuity and change over time? So I'm gonna go back to this so that you can look at that. You know, How can you use themes, lenses, and current events to show continuity and change over time through inquiry, through writing, through speaking and listening, through reading and viewing. And this gets students doing history, doing civics, not just sitting and, and getting the information told to them, but actually being part of it. And so, you know, a good place to start is just one, one place. Maybe you're just gonna start with inquiry. Maybe you wanna incorporate more writing as you explore um, this idea of showcasing continuity and change over time in your classroom. So at this point, I would ask if there's any questions, but there aren't because nobody joined live. But if you are watching this on your own um, at another time, please feel free to email me any questions that you have. I forgot to introduce myself at the beginning, but I am Jody Ide, and I am the high school social studies specialist. And I would be happy to help you in any way that I can as you're trying to navigate 
um, how to use themes, lenses, current events, and wiser to show um, continuity and change over time. So what next steps should you take? Well, think about ways that you can begin including the following into your classroom to show continuity and change over time. How could you start incorporating themes? How could you start using lenses? How could you start using current events? And then think about the ways Wiser can support student learning in understanding and recognizing continuity and change over time through writing, through inquiry, through speaking and listening, through reading and viewing. We have made a themes poster. If you're interested, um, just go ahead and email me at jody.i at canyonsdistrict.org for a themes poster, and we will get that out to you. Sometimes it's nice to have a poster in your in your room so that you um, can not only remind yourself, but it will help remind students as well of those important themes. So let's go back to our learning intentions and success criteria. Um, I'm hoping at this point you can implement or begin implementing themes, lenses, and current events into your curriculum so that students can start identifying continuity and change over time, and that you have thought about ways that WISER um, can help support that implementation into your curriculum. Because remember, as Teddy Roosevelt said, the more you know about the past, the better prepared you are for the future. Thanks so much for joining. Um, here's some important links to remember. There's the website for Canyons U, for the Canyons U bite-sized PD page, and a link there if you would like to get relicensure credit for this. Thanks again.